Hello and welcome back to another edition of the BCSN Sports Wrap. Brian Fulford and AD Drew here. And it's a pleasure to be speaking with the head women's basketball coach at Tuskegee University, the Golden Tigers, head coach Trelane Powell. And the Tigers are going dancing. And as you can see, folks, my man Drew is excited. He broke out the polo from deep in the closet. Coach Powell, congratulations to you and the, uh, and the Golden Tigers Tell us your emotions. How are you feeling right now about this opportunity to continue on the season? Uh, just super excited and um, thankful for the opportunity. Uh, this year has been a lot of highs and lows, and um, we're just looking forward to seeing what, what the end's going to be. Um, you know, the girls were kind of sad in the beginning because we, you know, possibly weren't going to have a season to begin with. Um, and so I'm just so thankful for the other coaches in the SIC who fought for us to be able to play. Talk a little bit about that for, for a start. I mean, you, you uh, we understand, you know, all of the, everything that every program had to go through this year with the uncertainty. And so at the beginning when the SIC made the announcement to uh, <laughs> suspend or not host a tournament um, and, but they gave teams the opportunity to play. Mm -hmm. um talk a little bit about that process um and and what it took to to get a schedule together or get a schedule that was going to give you this opportunity to actually get into the tournament well uh i will will say at first you know we weren't going to be able to 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 play um you know, once they canceled the season, we kind of met as uh, as head coaches and tried to figure out some solutions and ways around it. Um, and it was real difficult due to a lot of the other teams um, in our region only playing conference games. So, you know, we just went to our ADs and basically asked, you know, what about the schools whose presidents will allow them to play? And so the 80s just took it back to their meeting. And it was just a lot of going back and forth and meeting and waiting. Um, and, you know, we were practicing and not knowing if we were even going to play. Um, and then we kind of got the word that uh, the commissioner was going to allow us to play uh, one another. Because at first they were saying, you know, you can't play conference uh, member teams and not call it a conference game. But, you know, we've, we've done it plenty of times before. So, uh, they went ahead and, and, and allowed us to do it. Um, and then, you know, they they took the steps to to look at all the precautions and stuff as far as uh, COVID protocols and safety. Um, so, you know, like I said, it was kind of dwindling at first um, because some of the schools opted out early on. Um, as you can see, you know, all of our, our member schools did not participate uh, this year. So, um, once we got the green light, we just we got on Zoom calls and we just scheduled scheduled each other. And that's why, um, you know, we ended up playing Benedict four times. Uh, we were scheduled to play Spring Hill four times. Uh, we were just trying to play games and, and try to get those 11 games that we needed to to try to get a bid to go to the NCAA tournament. Now, Coach, how hard was it trying to put those games together as far as getting, getting your RPI and, uh, and everything else that you need in order to get an at-large bid because without the SIAC sponsoring a tournament this year, mm -hmm. there was an extra challenge. And then you have teams like you, Benedict, and Miles who got in 
about approximately a dozen games each. And then you've got people like Albany State, Fort Valley, and uh, Kentucky State who got in two, three, four, five games. So how hard was it trying to navigate that and then trying to get enough of power rating to be able to get that at large? Again, it was it was difficult, and uh, you know it wasn't a hard decision to make. But you know, like I told Coach Rice over at Benedict, in order for us to be the best, we got to beat the best. You know, they were the, the defending champs, and uh, they were nationally ranked, and so you know we had to play them four times, um, and it was it was going to be them or us. You know, we just had to play each other in order to get that, um, like you said, the RPI. Um, that that really benefited us. Um, and so, again, it, it was a no-brainer for me to to put Miles on our schedule four times and Benedict on our schedule. You know, it, it had it had nothing to do with, oh, you know, we thought we could beat them, but it was just, again, in order to try to get that at-large bid because we weren't going to have uh, the AQ, um, we, we had to play the best team, which was Benedict. Right. Now – you like you said, you weren't able to get to get not nine conference games in uh, because of uh, because everybody was pretty much trying to 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 stay within their conference. So, mm-hmm. hindsight being twenty twenty, do you, do you what do you think about the SIAC just not sponsoring the tournament with just the the teams that wanted to participate in a tournament in order to protect the uh, automatic qualifier? Um, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it definitely hurt us um, on the, oh, sorry, hurt us on the back end um, when it came to uh, our regional seeding. Um, and, you know, you, you have to look at everything that the regional committee and the national committee is looking at. But um, I really and honestly think that if we would have had a SOCON, um, so if we would have had the conference coach <laughs> right i was just look i was just uh congratulating one of the coaches today um but if we would have had our sic tournament um i really think that we would have gotten maybe two teams in in the region um so again yeah it, it really hurt us not to have our conference tournament yeah now you've got the for lack of a better word, when it comes to Division II basketball, you have the mantle of all Division II basketball, HBCU men and women on your back. As the not only the only women's program to make the tournament, but there were no men's teams also that made the Division II tournaments. What does that mean to you and your ladies to be the one team that's representing all of HBCUs when it comes to Division II? Uh-oh. Did we lose it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I had a phone phone call. There you go. Um, I mean, it it means a lot. It's huge. Uh, I don't want our girls to feel any pressure. Um, however, we do want to represent, and you know, we think that we can definitely do that. Our kids uh, have a chip on their shoulders. Um, again, you know, at the end of the day, we didn't have a conference tournament that hurt us. Um, we feel like we should have been seated higher in the regional tournament, but Hey, um, you know, our kids kind of feel used to, uh, proving that they belong. So, you know, at the end of the day, that's, <laughs> sorry, at the end of the day, this is just what we have to do. Important, uh, coach. You must. You always important. That's I how they call it. Coach, the phone's blowing up. Hey, um, so coach, I, look, I got to ask you because the, the Benedict Wait. game, was was so big um mm-hmm. going into that um you know the the they they had pretty much had a streak of almost 10 11 wins uh you know several years i mean we we even kind of pointed out how long it had been it had been a couple of presidents since tuskegee had beaten benedict i mean you know uh it, i mean it, it was all there going mm-hmm. into that week which by the way I got to tell you, that was a fun week to even talk about. I mean, there's not too many times you get four games against two of the best women's teams in HBCU basketball, Division Two. that, hey, look, this is your week. It's Benedict versus Tuskegee. Bam, bam, two at your place, two at their place. Talk a little bit about that going into that game. And obviously, you, you lose game one, but then you come out on the other side and win three in a row. Talk a little bit about that 
week from the beginning to the end, what it took from your ladies to get that done and how good it felt when it was all over. So going into it, uh, Coach Rice and I were having a hard time trying to schedule those four games in such a tight window, um, trying to make sure we get games in. Um, it was just difficult. And it ended up being we had to play four games in five days. And uh, so going into it, I felt like, you know, we had the better end of the stick. I'm pretty sure he felt like he had the better end of the stick with us going to them first. Um, but I felt like, you know, if we played our first game and, and it didn't go the way that we wanted to, we would get a better feel for them. And then they would have to come to us on the back end. Um, and so that's exactly what happened. Uh, you know, we we got off to a slow start because, um, you know, the beginning of the season, our, our Christmas break was long longer than normal just because of COVID. Um, so once we got back and, and played miles, we still were trying to figure things out. So uh, once we did get to Benedict, uh, I think our girls were more focused and locked in just because they were the defending champs and they felt like they had something to prove, uh, you know, us getting beat in the championship game last year by them. Um, but yeah, they, they, they were definitely focused and locked in, especially more, especially after that, that loss, that first loss. Mm -hmm. uh, now, one of, one of the young ladies who had a big game in that stretch and really had a big week. And I think she might, might've even uh, been our uh, BCSN uh, small school women's player of the week coming out of those games, uh, Shayla Jackson. Ashila. Ashila, excuse me, Shayla Jackson. Thank you, Drew. Um, from out of Maryville, Indiana, my, my my home state, but Maryville's up in the region. That's up in the Northeast, up in the region. See, I know that much. Uh, but she averages 17 points, uh, just under 10 rebounds for your team. Talk a little bit about her impact on this team, uh, the leadership she provides, and uh, – what uh, what what she's really meant to this team this season? Man, uh, <clears throat> Ashila has been a key part of uh, the team's success since I got here. Um, her, uh, my first year here, our very first game of the season, uh, she went down and tore ACL again. Mm. Um, so, you know, she is a red shirt senior at this point. <laughs> uh, and she has just really worked super, super hard to get back and surpass, uh, you know, what she was able to do before. Um, and again, this kid is just determined to win, man. Uh, she brings that, that high energy, that competitive edge every time she steps on the floor, whether it's a game or practice. Um, but yeah, she is definitely like the biggest piece, um, to, to our success as far as, um, you know, the, the, the nucleus of it all. Um, and, you know, she's just hard to match up with. And going into the Benedict game, you know, they have the, the uh, player, the returning player of the year, which is a post player. And so I just told her, you know, if you think you're better than her, then prove it. Then show us, you know, uh, after that first game, I told her, I said, that's why Yana Bay is the best post player in the conference. And she didn't. She didn't take that <laughs> too well. <laughs> so the next game, she came out again with the chip on her shoulder, and she had something to prove. Um, so I, I definitely um, am super excited that you know how how well she's playing right now, how focused and locked in she's playing, um, and to know that we will have her back again next year. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Right. Great. That's good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> now Brian pulled out. Jackson, but I've seen I've seen this seen some of these girls play. India Blakely, Lena Eunice. Mm -hmm. Talk about those two and anybody else who, which is, <laughs> <laughs> who may not be uh, quote unquote household names to somebody like Brian. But like I said, I've seen those, these girls play. So yes, I was just some love to the young lady from Indiana, Drew. That's all it was. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, no, shade, no shade on any of the other ladies. I just had to get yeah. our home team first. Uh, India. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> well, definitely India Blakely, man, she just, she makes our team go. Um, she basically runs the team. Uh, again, another senior that we'll, that we'll have back next year that we are super excited about. 
Um, and since our first year here again, you know, she's just always been that one that we depend on uh, to run the team and to set the pace. Um, Lena, she has definitely come a long way. Another one again, um, who came off a of knee injury uh, my first year here. And she had to put in a lot of work to get to where she is now. Um, and Lena has began now to come back to her, to her own. Um, you know, these kids come from high school and they talk about what they used to be able to do, what they can do. And I'm like, well, we'll do it. Yeah. You got to put in the work to get back to where you were, where you feel you were. Um, and she has, her shot has improved tremendously. Uh, her free throw shooting has improved. Um, and I mean, she is just, and she's, she's an athlete. She runs the floor. Um, and so, yeah, I, I have nothing but great things to say about India's uh, leadership on this team and, and Lena's as well. Yeah. Now, uh, tell us what you know about your opponent. You got a number five uh, seed. You got in, but didn't get a good draw. But let's be honest, this time of the year, there are no any, no easy games remaining on anybody's uh anybody's schedule you may get some favorable matchups as far as style of play during this time mm -hmm. of year but there aren't will be no easy games so tell us what you know about your opponent Tuscum I believe it is mm -hmm. um well very well coached disciplined team uh they shoot the ball well uh, most nights and so you know we got to focus on being able to get out to those shooters um, I don't think that they match up as well with us in the post, but I think everywhere else, um, you know, we're, we're probably even matched. Um, but again, they, they're fundamentally sound, um, well coached. And so we're, we're going to have to really, uh, focus on trying to, to stop their sort of Princeton style offense, um, where they do a lot of motion, um, offense. So, um, we're not as used to that in the SIAC, but um, we, we've definitely seen it before. Now, for, first time Tuskegee has been in the tournament on the women's side since 2008. What is it going to take, the, the one key thing that it will take for Tuskegee to make a run in the Division II tournament and possibly cut down the nets? Oh, definitely. It starts with defense. Uh, we're going to we're going to have to be able to defend and put the ball in the basket. Um, we've become a much better free throw shooting team. And I think that's going to be a big uh, piece, um, but we got to be aggressive and, and get to the free throw line in order to do that. Um, and, and that first game that we lost to Benedict, we shot a lot of free throws and we missed a whole lot. Um, and that, and that at this point, um, in our season or at that point in our season was very uncharacteristic for us. So definitely going to start with being disciplined on defense and not getting people in foul trouble. We need our key people to, to be able to, to stay in the game. All right. Uh, so coach, let's see in terms of the actual game. Now the dates, I know we're still waiting on the, the game time. We do know uh, Jefferson city, Tennessee, is the site location in terms of which date they're going to actually, uh, you know, have you all scheduled is still to be determined. Uh, at least, you know, just me looking at NCAA.com uh, right now. Uh, game will be played at Hope Field House. But you mentioned that you, you thought that it'd be a night game. Is that correct? Or what information yeah. do you have already about the game date? Yes, we will um... – arrive on Wednesday. I think every team has testing protocols once you get there. Um, and then we will play Friday. Uh, it, it is a, an, an evening game. So we'll play Friday, Saturday, and then, you know, the championship game will be on Monday. Uh, the Saturday game, I'm not sure if it's, I can't remember off the top of my head if it's a afternoon or evening game, but I know the one Friday is for sure. Do you like the short turnaround or do you, do you any, you know, cause it's, it, it'll be here in a couple of days, obviously. Uh, I mean, do you like the short turnaround? Uh, what are your thoughts on, on just that and what kind of, how much preparation time uh, this schedule allows for you? Yeah, actually uh, I do. I don't mind it uh, simply because, you know, we didn't play our last three games due to COVID protocols. 
Um, and so we haven't played in a while. <laughs> mm-hmm. So our girls are ready, you know, to get back out there and play. Um, and, you know, people keep asking, do you think it's going to help or you think it's going to hurt that, you know, they've just completed a, a conference tournament um, and you got you guys have just been practicing. So um, I'm not sure. I think that it has given us a chance to get our legs back. Like I said, you know, our starters play the bulk of the minutes, um, especially if we can keep people out of foul trouble. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that we are getting ready to go right back at it. Uh, and also because, you know, I am <laughs> about eight months pregnant. So <laughs> okay. time waits for no one. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, uh, so look, I now that you shared that, I mean, what, what kind of do I even dare ask? Do I ask about contingency plans? What kind of plan? How ready is Coach White? Let's let's go ahead and ask ask that question. How yeah. ready is Coach White to to step in? Listen, I have been preparing her ever since about the six month mark. Like, okay. listen, <laughs> you know, um, just in case, let's go ahead and talk about this, this, and that, and. Um, you know, she's a, she's a young coach, but she's very dedicated to this program and she wants the success of, you know, for the girls. And so she, she may have a little nerves, but she's definitely ready and up for the task. Wow. Well, coach, you, you've given us a, a, another great storyline to kind of pay attention to. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just gonna, I'm just gonna stop now before I start asking a bunch of other questions that get me in trouble and just kind of say, we're, we're mm-hmm. just going to be praying and hoping everything works out with the win that, you know, and, and I'll just keep it at that. So Drew, I'll let you close, uh, as the uh, Tuskegee alum there. Congratulations again, coach. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to do a, do a standing close. I'm not going to gloat yet, even though, uh, my, my team is, uh, made it in and I'll, I'll be, what rooting for them. number one will, uh, will fans be allowed in the venue well yes uh they are allowing fans um i think the the number that they said was at 25 percent, so that is very very low um the tickets just went on sale today for um, parents and supporters each game i think they're only allowing uh, or allotting 70 tickets and they will be clearing the the arena after each game. So, yes, uh, they will be, but it's very limited. All right. And j- just geographically for all our Tuskegee alum, because the, the Tuskegee alumni base is large. Mm-hmm. Let everybody know geographically where it is, how close to Nashville or any other major cities where you guys will be playing. Yeah, we are actually, all of the um, teams are actually staying in Knoxville. So it is kind of northeast uh, of, of Knoxville. So Chattanooga can get, <clears throat> Chattanooga can definitely get there then from, uh, from Knoxville. Within yeah, a couple of yeah it is, it is uh, actually about 35 minutes uh, northeast or east of, of Knoxville. All right. And I, um, right. also for, for the supporters, who don't get an opportunity to purchase the tickets, um, you know, the all of the games will be streamed, will live, be live. Will, will those be live stream free or will those, will those be live stream via pay site? Um, I think free, but don't quote me on that. Okay. Um, we we'll definitely have to check. Um, but I think our alumni are trying to work on uh, something where Tuskegee fans will be able to watch it for free. All right. Well, I said, like I said, that alumni base is great. You want to say something, Brian? I'm just going to say, I'm looking at the map, and I'm telling you, anybody in Nashville, Charlotte, Atlanta, Chattanooga, Lexington, Louisville, Cincinnati, direct shots right there to Johnson City, uh, you know, via, I mean, there's some nice highways there, 40, 75, 81. All of those highways will get you there. So you got plenty of time to, uh, <laughs> to, to book your – book your, uh, book your uh, your travel plans and and get out there and support COVID, COVID protocol first though. Sure. COVID protocol first. Sure. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Yes. All right. Last thing, uh, coach, tell everybody where if they want to support you guys during this week or just just your program in general, how they get in touch with you, where they send their where they send those big checks that Tuskegee uh, alumni like to send. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of members of Tuna going to be listening to this, uh, so. Uh, Go ahead and give us all that information. Yeah, we we have uh, an awesome 
support system, especially beginning with Tuna, our women's basketball alumni. Um, but yes, just the website um, has my email address or Coach White's email address. But my email address is T Powell and the number one because we do have a football coach uh, that has the same initials and sometimes gets emails that were meant for me and, and, and same vice versa. Um, but T Powell one at Tuskegee.edu, uh, B white at Tuskegee.edu. And um, that is the, the best way to reach both of us um, or via our um, social media outlets that coach white runs and frequently is checking um, messages daily. So. Yeah. And uh, last thing, Coach, uh, congratulations. You are our new BCSN number one team in small school. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting on you to cut into us, but <laughs> since you didn't cut into us, I'll I go ahead and, and, and tell you uh, that you are the new uh, number one team as the polls will be or be released. <laughs> okay. We appreciate it. Well deserved. <laughs> Well-deserved, well-deserved. <laughs> All right, congratulations again, Coach Trelane Powell, the uh, Tuskegee University Golden Tigers. Uh, uh, in the Division II uh, playoffs, the 48-field tournament begins this Friday, Jefferson City, Tennessee. Um, that's where the Tigers will, will be as the five seed in that pod. More information to come um, as it comes. Make sure you're following uh, Tuskegee um, Athletics, Tuskegee Women's Basketball, all on Twitter, um, Facebook, everywhere else you go on social media. And um, that'll be it. Drew, any, any other Tuskegee chance you want to add before you close out? I know you, I know there's yeah. something. Oh, you, yeah. T, you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> now we can close it out, brother. <laughs> all right. Again, good luck and thank you. Be safe, coach. God bless thank and good luck you. to you guys. Thank you. All, all right. right. But you're my beast, they are hard.